just a second. Can you see, can you hear me? Everything okay? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, my name uh, uh, is Erivelto Volpe and my talk will be the thermal ablation of uh, tire nodules in general. I won't talk specifically about microwave in this uh, presentation. <clears throat> I have no conflicts of interest for this presentation. I had, uh, it's impossible to start my presentation uh, without do a special thanks to Dr. Beck from South Korea, who guide me in, my, in the beginning of my uh, uh, first steps in uh, thermal ablations. He is more than uh, a teacher. He was, uh, he is an encourager and above all, a very good friend. And uh, I have to, uh, thanks to my team. This is uh, my team in Brazil. Together, uh, uh, since 2018, we performed uh, almost 600 ablations in, in, in uh, 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 and almost treated 1,000 uh, nodules. And of course, we are very proud uh, to be part of this team that recently published uh, the guidelines about uh, uh, thyroid nodules. Uh, this is a, a, a multi-society multi, uh, work and uh, of course we are very proud to be part of this this uh, uh, this guideline well which are, uh, which is the the journey of a patient with uh, a thyroid nodule when a, pa a patient uh, is diagnosed with a thyroid nodule there are uh, some options of treatment we could just keep the patient un under uh, active uh, under surveillance uh, or we can refer the patient for, for surgery. However, some patients uh, suffer from symptoms uh, and anxiety, and others have uh, cosmic demands. Uh, so what else we can offer to these patients? Uh, we have a paradox after the diagnosis of benign thyroid nodule. We can observe uh, the, the evolution uh, of the nodule until the, pa the patient start to get symptoms of uh, or the nodule reach a high volume. Or you can refer uh, the patient to surgery and uh, the patient will take daily hormones for the rest of his life. And uh, there is a common question that all of us uh, here in our offices uh, is there an alternative that it can preserve my thyroid and just remove uh, the nodule? This is a very common question, right? Uh, so instead of just follow our surgery, uh, now we can offer uh, thermal ablations for uh, the patients. Uh, there is no scar, no hypothyroidism, and we can uh, preserve the thyroid gland. Well, when we start to talk about a new technology like thermal ablation or a new mobile phone or a new computer, uh, there is a, a curve of uh, adoption uh, for every new technology. When we start a new technology, we start as uh, 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 early adopters. And uh, there is a period when uh, since we started to do uh, 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 thermal ablations in Brazil, uh, nobody pays attention to the to this technology. We call this period as the chasm. Uh, today we already passed through the chasm, and we are in the early adopters, uh, early majority, uh, uh, early majority because uh, many colleagues and many patients uh, believe. And once they start, they adopt this technology uh, in the daily uh, practice. But I want to show you a very interesting uh, survey uh, of uh, European Thyroid Association that showed that only 5% of um, ATA members personally uh, perform thyroid ablations. 
and only 13 percent of of uh, the uh, of the uh, survey refer potentially eligible uh, patients to centers with uh, the ex uh, specific expertise to perform thermal ablations, and which are uh, the, the the primary factors. Uh, the in a the first one is in a inequality of the access. The second uh, is the lack of the experience with thyroid uh, ablation. Perhaps Bullet could, uh, could uh, teach this technique in, in Europe. And uh, the absence of uh, uh, the societal guidelines that, uh, as I show you, uh, the, the new guidelines published this year, at the beginning of this year, uh, can, uh, can give the, the, the background to, to refer patients uh, for this uh, this option, and uh, it's important to remember we can use this technology for benign nodules, papillary micro uh, carcinoma, well selected, uh, recurrent papillary thyroid cancer, and uh, uh, lymph node meds. I, I love this slide because uh, uh, it, it's, it's exactly uh, we we are happening uh, now. We are changing. Uh, the way we see the nodules, we treat the nodules, uh, it's uh, a, a new paradigm, a, a new way, a new tool, a new form to, to see not only the nodules, must, but the patients. Of course, you know that surgery, it's the best therapeutic option for uh, thyroid nodules, uh, but have some concerns regarding the surgery, the cost of the surgery, uh, the risk of temporary or permanent complications, uh, especially uh, uh, in the uh, damage of recurrent laryngeal nerve and parathyroid glands, of course, in experienced hands like Dr. Fernandez and Dr. Carlos, uh, the chance of these uh, complications is very low. But it's, it's a, a concept that I want to, to point. It's uh, for us, as surgeons, the best for us is to do the best surgery. Uh, 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 a surgery without complications, with a short stay in the hospital, with the, the uh, uh, short recovery of the patient. But it's, it's interesting for many patients, their concerns is not related to the surgery, but it's mainly uh, to the effect of the surgery in the quality of life, the need for medications for the rest of his life. It's, it's a, an important point that if, if, if we have time by uh, the discussion, it would be good to, to, to talk about this. Oh, sorry. So we know that uh, uh, 100, uh, 1,000 to 100,050 thyroidectomies are performed every year in the U.S. And in 2020, uh, 53,000 uh, uh, 53, uh, uh, new thyroid cancers were diagnosed. So most thyroidectomies are for benign disease. And then after 20 years uh, after the, the first publications, uh, you, uh, you, uh, ultrasound thermal ablations uh, are considered a safe and effective treatment for thyroid nodules. Well, uh, uh, it's important to say that when we talk about thermal ablations, uh, we need to have the concept that thermal ablations is lo the local application of extreme temperatures can be uh, even high or low. Uh, to induce reverse, uh, irreversible uh, injury to the cells and tumor apoptosis and coagulative necrosis. It's, it's the main principle of any thermal ablations. And precutaneous uh, uh, energy uh, ablations uh, has been used for uh, treatment of uh, uh, many uh, uh, tumor types. And uh, Another important point, this technology rapidly advanced after the use of cross-sectional images made in uh, precutan uh, treatments uh, uh, not only possible, but, but also uh, uh, commonplace. 
then uh, this is uh, uh, um, the evolution of thermal ablations. Uh, thermal ablations started in the middle of uh, 1800s uh, with acid sal saline solutions. And uh, another important moment uh, was in the early uh, 1900s uh, uh, when started the, the use of uh, the, the uh, medical, uh, the use of uh, ultrasound as a, a medical tool. Then evolution, evolution, evolution. Now uh, many uh, uh, thermal ablations are used in medical practice every day. So we, not, we have uh, nowadays uh, many modalities of many, uh, uh, minimally invasive treatments. Uh, or that, uh, that don't need general anesthesia. Uh, uh, and most of these uh, uh, ablations are chemical ablations. We, we have uh, ethanol ablations and uh, thermal ablations that we have especially uh, microwave, radio frequency ablation and laser ablation. These are minimally invasive. And we have also high full ablation that is no invasive. The, uh, among uh, of all these techniques, uh, we have in our uh, daily practice, in practical terms, uh, ethanol ablation and uh, 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 radio frequency and microwave, because uh, these techniques are uh, uh, most evaluated and easier to, to master. Uh, we have uh, um, uh, different thermal ablation technologies, uh, like uh, uh, as minimally invasive. Uh, the microwave uh, ablation that can uh, induce tumor coagulation via thermal effects, uh, effects, laser ablation that induce heat in the tissue with uh, this, this heat leads to coagulative necrosis that destroys tumor cells and radio frequency ablation that use uh, out, uh, 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 alternating uh, current that uh, induce also uh, the cell death by a coagula coagulation necrosis. Which are the advantages uh, uh, of these thermal ablations? The main advantages are lower morbidity, the increased preservation of surround tissues, the reduced cost, short hospitalization time, uh, there is an interprocedural monitoring by visual, visualization, main ultrasound or uh, uh, computer tomography. And it's a good option to treat patients who, have, who refuse or are not candidates for conventional therapies. Uh, which are the disadvantages? The incomplete tissue, uh, 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 the incomplete uh, tissue of the disease ablation, because uh, 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 thermal ablations are operator dependent. Uh, the recurrence, if that's why it's so important to have a good background to, 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 to do a, a, a effective treatment. And uh, in some, uh, uh, some cases, they, uh, they have inferior outcomes according especially to disease and the, uh, the, the choice of thermal ablation. So uh, most common thermal ablations are radio frequency and microwave, which are uh, high temperature based modalities. Uh, laser for um, it's not so used. Uh, it's interesting that uh, in terms of thermal ablation, the first uh, the first studies started with laser, but nowadays laser is, is less uh, less used than uh, microwave and radio frequency. Uh, these techniques cause uh, 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 thermal injury to ablated cells, which affects uh, uh, not only the cells, but also the tumor microenvironment and cause uh, lesions at the subcellular levels. Uh, it's important to know that the, the, the destruction of tumor uh, occurs uh, in two phases which are uh, direct and indir indirect mechanisms. And the, the heat ablation area, uh, we have three, three areas, three zones. That the central zone, which is immediately beyond the, of the chip, which undergo, uh, uh, undergone uh, uh, ablation uh, and coagulative necrosis. 
There is a, a, a transitional zone, a peripheral of, uh, of the chip, we can uh, cause a sublethal hyperthermia. And uh, this area could have a, a, a apoptosis or a recovery. And the surrounding tissues that, that is not affected by the ablation. So here you can see in this picture, uh, the tip, the area of where the temperature reaches more than 50, uh, uh, 50 Celsius degrees and an area uh, surrounding this main area where the, the, uh, you have the sublethal damage with some parts will recover from the lesion. That's, that's why it's so important you have uh, a good uh, image orientation and you have a normal tissue surrounding this, this area. Well, we have to know that a microwave is different from RFA. Both destroy tissues by coagulative necrosis. Uh, so RFA is limited in tissues of, uh, uh, has a limited results in tissues of low electrical conductivity because uh, uh, RFA uh, needs uh, uh, a, uh, 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 a good uh, electrical uh, path to, to do its best effects uh, because the, uh, the tip of the RFA is not the source of the heat itself, but it generates frequencies, high frequencies that frictionally uh, heat up the tissue causing uh, the, the coagulative necrosis. So uh, uh, the, the, the volume of uh, the, the thermal uh, action of RFA uh, uh, needs, needs a slow and method, methodical, very, very accurate energy deposition for uh, heating that will uh, reach up to 100 uh, uh, centigrade Celsius. Uh, and to avoid, if you don't do a, a very, very step-by-step, -step, do the, the correct technique, it, you want to avoid churning and vaporization. Microwave is different. It, a microwave applies electromagnetic fields with high frequencies uh, to, sorry, to direct heat the tissues to let out temperatures then greater than uh, 150 uh, uh, Celsius degrees uh, by uh, dielectric hysteresis. Dielectric hysteresis is a process which polar molecules, primarily water, are forced to continuously, continuously reading with the oscillation the electric field. It causes a, a movement of, uh, of the molecules. This, 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 uh, the, this process, process results in generation of kinetic energy and heat, a high heat, uh, high temperature generation. Since uh, microwaves relies differently from RFA on direct head heating over thermal conductance. Uh, this way, it's interesting that uh, microwave has the potential to produce faster and larger ablation volumes with uh, less susceptibility to heat sink effect. It's a very important difference between these, these both techniques. This is an example when here you can see uh, uh, the principles of the, the, the microwave and RFA. And you can see here the area of the heating, it's bigger than the area of RFA and on the, uh, on, you can see here on, on uh, picture D. So uh, th that's why we have different parameters that affect uh, the ablation volume of, a, of these both techniques. The properties of the tissues, uh, of the tissue uh, affects more directly RFA than microwave and the, the the perfusion, of course, the, uh, the susceptibility of the heat sink is much more important for RFA than microwave. By other side, 
the imaging accuracy, it's much more, much more important when you perform RFA and the tissue contraction, uh, uh, it also is uh, it's, uh, more important for a microwave than RFA. It's important to, uh, also to understand these, these, these talks that uh, help you uh, uh, understand and uh, help you to choose the best technique for each patient and for your, uh, for your own practice. There are some also some differences uh, regarding uh, microwave and RFA. Uh, when, uh, uh, as Bolita already uh, showed, uh, you need to do hydro dissection to, to uh, protect the surrounding structures. And when you use uh, microwave, you can use physiological saline solution. And in RFA, it's not possible, it's not allowed. And also uh, the, the access of the chip in, uh, uh, in the microwave, you could use a transistic approach or the lateral approach. And uh, when you perform RFA, the, 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 the lateral approach is not allowed. In terms of uh, results, uh, the, uh, both are very similar when you treat uh, uh, solid nodules, uh, the volume reduction of, with one session after six months is about 60%. And mixed nodules, uh, it's about 80%. And uh, nodules, uh, mainly cystic, it's almost 90%. It's another important point for we discuss. And in terms of uh, uh, complications, uh, it's, it's interesting uh, because uh, the patients uh, less have much less uh, pain when uh, when underwent a, a microwave than RFA. Uh, by the other side, it seems that uh, the voice chains are most important in, in microwave and another part is another point to discuss. And uh, in terms of edema in uh, Post uh, uh, ablation uh, hypothyroidism, the, uh, both techniques have the same outcomes. I will show our experience of uh, uh, thermal ablations and how uh, uh, we change our philosophy of to treat nodules when we start to use thermal ablations. Because when we start to use thermal ablations, we have to treat not only the nodule but uh, 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 the patient. This is a patient that uh, came uh, in 2019. He had a huge nodule, 63 cubic centimeters. And when he came for the first time, I told him, oh, you had a huge nodule, won't be possible to treat in one session. You possibly need a second or even a third session. And he told, okay, doc, I don't want to, to take pills. I want to do... Uh, uh, thermal ablation, let's go ahead. So I performed the, the, the first session of thermal ablation in June, 2019. Then six months after the reduction of the nodule was remarkable. And then uh, after one year, the volume of the nodule was 35 cubic centimeters. So I told him, okay, let's go to the second session because you, you still had a, a, a high nodule, lesser than, uh, than, than the first session, but you still need the, to, to do a second session. But he told me, no doc, no doc, I'm okay with my nodule. It, it, it doesn't uh, uh, complain to me uh, anymore. I, I don't want to do the, the second session uh, for now. So I made a deal with these patients. Okay, so we want to do the second session now, but we will uh, follow you up. And if the nodule starts to regrow, we do the second session. Okay, doc, uh, we have a deal. So since then, uh, there is no, uh, no uh, uh, regrow of the nodule and the patient uh, is happy with uh, his huge nodule, but uh, with no symptoms. And another important point is that when we uh, perform thermal ablations, we cannot use the chi rats system 
uh, after the, the thermal ablation because you can see, as you can see here, the aspect of the nodule changes dramatically uh, after the, the ablation. Uh, I want to talk a little about my personal experience. Um, uh, uh, as you can see, I use more RFA than uh, microwave because pain is the most common complaint of my, my, my patients. And ecchymosis also is very common. We have some cases of skin allergy, cough, dysphagia, temporary, temporary hoarseness, vocal fold palsy, one case, and unfortunately, two cases of Clo Bernard Horner syndrome at the beginning of uh, at the beginning of our learning curve. And you can see here a patient one day after RFA. You can see the multiple functions of uh, uh, of the 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 the, the ablation and ecchymosis and the same patient 35 days after the procedure. And you can note that is remarkable, the reduction of the volume of the neck. Uh, of course, when you have uh, a, a small nodule, uh, the results are better. This is uh, a patient with a nodule eight cubic centimeters a very young, a very uh, tiny patient. It's not, the nodule is not so big, but border hairs a lot. So uh, this is the volume uh, pre-ablation. And you can see here uh, the vascularization of the nodule uh, pre-ablation and three months after the ablation. It's uh, how the, the, sorry. Okay, uh, it's, it's remarkable how uh, odds the reduction of vascularization of the nodule, except on the dangerous triangle area. And after five months, the reduction was 80%. This is a, a patient that we performed uh, RFA for autonomous thyroid nodule uh, last week. And you can see the, the nodule before radio frequency, ab uh, radio frequency ablation or whatever, any thermal ablation. And one week after the ablation, the reduction of the nodule, and most important, in my opinion, is a toxic nodule when the, the vascularization of the nodule reduced dramatically. And uh, 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 micropapillary thyroid cancer is important to, to note that when we treat malignancies, the technique is different from benign diseases. When we treat uh, malignancies, we need to treat the tumor itself in an uh, area of normal tissue surrounding the tumor as a, a safety margin. So you can see here very uh, uh, small micropapillary, the same tumor immediately uh, of uh, the ablation. And you can see the area of the treatment is bigger. And then one month after the ablation and Three months after the ablation, the nodules start to vanish. You can see an inflammatory process and, uh, and edema. And we are uh, very happy because nine months of the ablation, the nodule uh, virtually disappear. Uh, we have a, a, a short, a little experience in um, um, parathyroid adenomas. It's a, one of our few cases. And uh, it could be uh, a thermal ablation also could be a good option for uh, isolated uh, metastasis of micropapillary thyroid cancer. It's uh, one patient with uh, was underwent two surgeries and uh, had just one isolated uh, neck metastasis. And we perform. Uh, the radio frequency uh, uh, thermal ablation, sorry. It's, this case was uh, radio frequency ablation of uh, the, the, the metastasis with very good results. Well, we need to know that thermal ablation is changing the way we see the tyra nodules. We should treat the patient uh, itself, not only the nodule, Thermal ablation is a new treatment too. We should master the technique. Thermal ablation not compete with surgery, but is an, uh, also an additional option. And thermal ablation, in my humble opinion, should be considered the first line therapy for symptomatic benign nodules. 
and a very reasonable option, option for selected micropapillary thyroid cancer, cancer. It's important to remember that the major concern of the patient the, with the, the, the surgery is not the surgery itself, but the need for medication forever. Uh, thyroid ablation, uh, uh, thermal ablations can help avoid both. Uh, just a, a quick reminder for the, my Brazilian colleagues that are attending this webinar, I, I want to invite you to attend our International Thyroid Cancer Meeting next Feb February. Thank you very much. It was a great pleasure to uh, have this, this time to, to show my experience. Thank you.